This video was made in association with KnifeInformer.com. Head on over to KnifeInformer for all of your blade-related needs, including reviews, comparisons, stats, and more. What is up, everybody, and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Gareth Bull Shamwari. This knife comes to us on loan from my friend Mike. I was very excited to be able to check this knife out. Um, I've never gotten to handle a Gareth Bull knife before. For those of you who don't know, Gareth is a maker out of South Africa. He has highly sought-after knives, um, and he really just isn't a high... Uh, throughput maker so there's not a lot of knives coming out of his shop meaning that getting your hands on one while not impossible not necessarily as rare as some really really top end makers um, he's definitely a little bit harder to get a hold of than something like maybe like JD Vandeventer uh, or even Thorburn as far as I can tell so let's go ahead and talk about the stats on this knife we'll do uh, first a quick size comparison so you guys can get an idea of uh, what we're working with here is pretty good slim EDC size, but not a uh, not a super, super small knife either. So let's check it out. All right. So as you guys can see here, the knife does uh, end up being somewhere almost right in the middle between the PM2 and the RAT2. It is a little bit on the smaller side when compared to the PM2. So you can see here that the Shamwari is a little bit larger than the RAT2 in pretty much every dimension. Proportionally speaking, um, you know, the handle's a little bit thicker. The handle is a little bit longer and the blade is a little bit longer. So in kind of every way, it's just um, slightly more supreme in terms of size than the Rat 2. However, compared to the PM2, you can see that the knife uh, isn't too particularly large uh, and it actually makes for a pretty good EDC. I was honestly a little bit surprised when I first opened the package. I would have expected the Shamwari to be a slightly smaller knife. Um, not by much and maybe not even quite as small as the Rat 2, but just a slightly smaller package. Um, I was quite impressed to find that, you know, it like really fills the hand and is and is a, a full-size knife, albeit um, a pretty, you know, uh, a pretty good EDC to be able to kind of tuck away. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the weight as well and get a good idea for, um, you know, how much this is actually going to pull on your pocket. It's a fairly light knife, with titanium liners and carbon fiber scales. Um, I'm going to take a guess here. I haven't weighed this yet and say somewhere in the three to three and a half ounce zone, um, maybe on the heavier side of three to three and a half ounces. So let's go ahead and see what we end up with. All right, now that we're all set with our scale, let's go ahead and find out the verdict. So at 3.21 ounces, you can see that um, it's a little bit lighter than perhaps I predicted, although it is right in that range that I had guessed. Uh, it's, you know, for the size versus the weight, it's actually a really, really good package. Um, I completely stand behind this knife. A lot of the choices um, in, you know, a thinner blade stock uh, and thinner scales really added up to a pretty lightweight knife, uh, despite the fact that there is actually no internal milling done to these titanium liners. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. I'd say that's, uh, that's a good weight. Moving on, let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws on this knife. So, the best part about this knife is definitely going to be the action. Um, I kind of have a lot that I want to say about that, so I'm going to leave that aspect of the knife for the end of the video, so that way I have a little bit of time to gush about it, and people who want to get just kind of a general overview for the other stuff going on with this knife um, don't have to kind of sit through all of that. So let's jump in by talking about the blade. The blade here is, man, it's really a work of art. It truly is. So what we have here is a super tall hollow grind. And when I say super tall, you guys can see that the grind really comes almost all the way to the very tippy top of the knife. You have this very, very minor, sorry, I was out of frame there. You have this very, very minor sort of mild swedge. Um, and it's really impressive that he is really making full use of the, the kind of whole uh, piece of material that he has to, to build the blade out of and this really tall hollow grind is going to make this an extraordinary slicer. You guys can see that the blade stock is relatively thin um, as well so that definitely helps with that and you know I know that there are some people who aren't quite as big a fan of a hollow grind versus a flat grind especially for um, slicing <clears throat> but I have to say that uh, with something that's this tall 
um, and sort of this shallow all the way through. It's not a super deep uh, curved hollow grind, you know, because it's so tall that it's it's fairly mild. So uh, overall, this is going to make an incredible uh, piece of slicing material. It's it's beautiful. I really don't think I have to say too much about the blade other than like really show it to you guys in detail. You can see we have a general drop point shape. Uh, we have a great piercing tip. We have some nice, you know, reasonable curvature here, a little bit of flat here. Overall, it's just kind of a perfect EDC blade. I'm a really, really big fan of it. Some other aspects of the blade that I really like, of course, the hand rub satin finish is impeccable, as are most of the finishes coming out of South Africa. And another aspect of the blade that I really like is the crown, which is going to be that curved uh, top of the blade. The spine, that's the word I was looking for. The sort of uh, curved spine. Definitely a favorite aspect for me. So um, jumping down the list, let's talk about the clip. This clip, uh, it functions pretty well. I do really, really like the hidden hardware. Um, it is going to be a 3D milled clip, although it has sort of kind of pressed clip dimensions. Um, hidden hardware is always a win for me. You can kind of see it just in there. Um, and I do like some of the shaping that he's done, a lot of the chamfered edges and everything like that all around. Uh, you kind of have a 45 degree all the way around the edge here. So very smooth, comfortable clip. I can rub my hand all over it and nothing catches. Everything feels good. Um, it is a little bit shallow and a little bit of a, um, you know, the ramp's okay, but it is still just a, a teensy weensy bit shallow. And so uh, I found myself one hand out of the pocket. Um, you know, I don't have to rip it out of the pocket or anything like that. It comes out of the pocket very well. Most of the time it's two hands back in. Um, there were a couple times where, you know, I got just the right shove and it went in with one hand but ultimately it's gonna be a really great clip uh, I don't have any fears about the knife falling out of my pocket or anything like that and it's pretty pretty easy to use although you will be using two hands most of the time just with the tension and sort of the shallowness of the clip so moving to the next thing I want to talk about just the design in general um, there's a lot of things that are going on here that you know this knife is pretty simple especially this particular configuration um, but there's some design elements that I definitely want to point out to you guys so the first of which is that I really like this uh, this kind of theme that I've been seeing and not to say that this is in any way new right people have probably been doing this for hundreds of years but um, I really like the sort of cutting away of the scales so that the liners expose themselves. Let me see if I can... Now, these particular liners are not colored, so you don't get uh, anything too crazy, but you can see that beautiful silver kind of matching the hardware as well as the blade itself. And I really like that look. It's super clean. Um, it's also present on my JD Vandeventer Kenpachi to an even lesser extent with blue. You can just see around the edges. Um, and there was another knife that I had on the table recently that had... Uh, Similar feature. I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't quite see it, but um, yeah. So I really like those exposed liners. That's that really does it for me. Um, another interesting thing that he did was a blue uh, standoff here, and that just adds a little bit of color to what is an otherwise very plain knife. Now, of course, when we get into talking about things like configuration, you know, there's there's a lot to be considered. Um, I have a friend of mine who actually picked up a chamois recently in a kind of dress build, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, Gareth really knows how to make a knife. He's got um, beautiful Timascus bolsters, a Timascus clip in the same shape, um, and then carbon fiber scales under the bolsters. But man, that is a beautiful piece. So do you keep in mind that there is a little bit of uh, custom customization um, uh, to his knives, but uh, this particular one, and sometimes when he does these batches of just carbon fiber versions, it's nice to get a little bit of color in something like a standoff like that. Um, so something else to talk about is the Maker's Mark. Now, Maker's Mark's uh, something that you know can be a point of contention on knives. Certain ones are good, certain ones are bad, certain knives have billboards, others don't. I love the way Gareth's Maker's Mark works on this knife and any of his knives. You can see this kind of front area here almost matches the drop point of the blade. And I think fundamentally a lot of the lines of his little signature here kind of match the lines and contours of the knife. And I just think it's a really beautiful Maker's Mark. You know, it's nothing, it's a little bit big, um, but it's nothing super distracting. And I really don't think it takes away from the knife. If anything, it adds to sort of the design elements. Now, of course, he has different models, and so it's going to look different on those models. But uh, in this particular instance, I 
wanted to point out the Maker's Mark as something that I actually thought is a positive addition to the knife, even though generally they're just kind of accepted as being there. Uh, the next thing to talk about is going to be the ergonomics. Now, as you can see, this is kind of a pill shape. Uh, I think I did say that I wasn't a huge fan of this originally, but after having one kind of in the hand um, and really experiencing it and playing more with some of Sam's HEA Designs knives, um, the pill shape has kind of grown on me. You know, it's it's good. <clears throat> it feels good in the hand. It's kind of a straight, you know, handle ultimately, so it's pretty easy to grip. This particular knife does have a nice cutout here, uh, and that is both for your thumb to get into this region to be able to disengage the knife, but it also works well to have your index finger kind of tucked away in there, especially because this is a knife, you know, without a flipper tab to protect your finger. So if you were to slip forward on the knife, um, this provides actually a lot more traction than you would think. Uh, to be able to protect yourself from that. So ultimately the ergonomics function very well. This jimping here works pretty well as, uh, as it works pretty well as well. Um, it is the same jimping that is you know for the flipper tab and it's much more useful in this area when you're actually flipping the knife than it is when you have the knife open. And the primary reason for that isn't because it's not super grippy, which it's actually not in this position, but uh, it's because of how far back the jimping actually is. So you can see here, when I grip the knife naturally, my thumb is completely off the jimping. Um, and that's just because that's, you know, how I'm holding the knife in a saber grip. So not the most useful jimping there. Of course, if you pinch grip the knife, it's great. You, your thumb gets into this little section here. Um, you can dig your index finger back here with the jimping, although again, you kind of want to be more up here. But uh, either way, this knife is very easy to maneuver, very easy to control, very comfortable in the hand. So let's go ahead and jump to the final aspect of this knife, which is the action. Now, you guys have heard me talk about actions in the past. Um, obviously, it's something that's, it's a kind of a really big deal to me in my collection. I think it's really important just because of the way that I collect knives. Obviously, action's not the end-all be-all in terms of how uh, how well a knife performs out in the field or anything like that, but if you are kind of a fidgeter and you're more of a, a, a desk jockey as I am, then, you know, the way the knife feels in the hand and being able to play with it and flip it and watch it drop shut is, is really a big deal, and this knife absolutely blows everything out of the water. Um, I was not super expecting to think uh, that it was as impressive as I do, but um, I have to say, guys, I have not put this knife down since the moment I got it. I really haven't. And the reason for that is that I'm just literally always flipping it. I'm constantly flipping it, and it's kind of annoying. Like, I almost flip it more than I, like, want to be sitting flipping knives, but I just am so impressed by it, and... I love it so much. So let's talk about some of the details. Um, let's talk about the opening first. So obviously this knife is a front flipper, uh, and so there's going to be a couple different ways you can open the knife. Now the, we have this jimping here that I spoke about earlier, and while I did say it was a little bit too slippery to use for your thumb on the back here, it's actually perfect because when you get to this rounded area, the little jagged edges you can see they are spaced out further. Imagine if you laid a bunch of dominoes in a row and then started curving the dominoes. You know, the ends of those dominoes are further apart uh, than they are if they were parallel. So what was a little bit too smooth in terms of jimping, as soon as it starts rounding this corner, it, it widens up a little bit and becomes very, very grippy. So this section of jimping here, I'm trying to hold the knife closed while I show you guys my thumb kind of getting stuck on it. That's, it's really good. So um, obviously the first way that you can open the knife is just by rolling it out. So all we're gonna do is break the detent and then just roll it out. Sometimes you do have to kind of click it into place if you do it like that with your index finger. The next way is of course to do the same thing but to actually flick it. Now this is going to be probably the easiest and most common way. You just, uh, I hold the knife with my two fingers down here around the clip. Um, and then you just kind of push back and you get great deployment. The detent on this is super solid, very well tuned. And then the other way is of course you can pinch grip the knife like this and just pull back with your index finger and you get really solid deployment as well. Do that a couple times near the uh, mic. So you guys get a sense of the sound. So it's very snappy. Now with this um, sort of thinner uh, uh, stop pin here and thinner blade stock, 
The sounds are a little bit tinky. Uh, I would say if there's one aspect of the action on this knife that lacks compared to what I would consider are other amazing actions in my collection, particularly those that come from South Africa and more specifically something like a Thorburn, is the sound. Um, Thorburn has just a much more crisp sort of um, uh, in-your-face sound that is really authoritative. Um, and the Shamwari doesn't have that authoritative thwack. Um, it is a very solid sound, um, but it's a little bit more metallic. Um, it's a little bit higher in pitch. And so it's, I would say that's the one area where, you know, if, if it had like the sound of a Thorburn, I'd be saying this is like the literally the best knife that you could get and that it was better than a Thorburn. Flat out, that's what I would be saying. Because everything else about this action is just so special. So uh, we talked about the opening. We talked about the jimping on the flipper tab. Uh, we talked about the sounds. The next thing that I want to talk about is, you know, this knife is assisted by the thin blade stock um, in terms of the weight. But usually a smaller blade or a thinner blade stock means, uh, you know, kind of a worse drop shot action. And in this case, as you guys can see here, that's not the case at all. And one thing that I'm really impressed with when this knife closes is the consistency with which it does so. So even something like my Thorburn, if I flip it enough, there will be certain moments where it kind of closes all the way and then other moments where it kind of gets caught up right here before it clicks into the detent. And now I, I like that. I mean, it's still an amazing action and I, I kind of like that variability sometimes. But, you know, on this particular knife, it's always coming to a complete close. And it's always doing so with, with the same amount of effort. Um, and I have to say, when this knife closes, it's something to behold. It's, it's just hydraulic enough that the knife isn't um, as slam shut as a Shirogorov. So you guys can see I've gotten some other good examples of what I consider a good action in my collection. Shirogorov, beautiful, super smooth, very consistent. You'll see here... The knife completely closes from a vertical position. And that's great. I love that for its own reasons. And, you know, I can appreciate multiple different types of actions and think that they're all equally as great, but for all kinds of different reasons. And one thing that I love about the Shiro is how beautifully, consistently it uh, brings itself to a close. It's not doing so now because uh, I'm pushing on the lock bar a little bit too much. But um, the Shamwari closes with a little bit more hydraulicness than that in that you can see it kind of gets right to this angle and then just a little bit of movement brings her in but it does so very consistently you can see all it takes is tilting and gravity does the rest and that makes this a really really fun knife to fidget with because you can kind of play with it a little bit and it's just it's really, really enjoyable to sit and just watch the knife kind of bring itself to a close. And you cannot feel the bearings or the detent ball at all. I flipped this knife a ton, so the detent ball is getting a little teensy weensy bit dry, so I can hear it a lot more than when I originally opened the knife. But uh, nothing has changed in terms of how incredibly smoothly and cleanly that it comes to a close. And of course... As I mentioned in some other videos, if you close your eyes, you won't actually know at what angle the blade is because you cannot feel anything happening through the frame. So that's pretty much it, guys. I just really wanted to gush about this knife. It was really nice to be able to have a super positive review. Um, it's been a while since I've had a knife kind of... I mean, the, the Kenpachi here really took my breath away, and I was really happy with that. But that was also a knife that I purchased, and so that was a little bit to be expected. Um, you know, this knife is not the configuration that I would own of a Shamwari. It's a little bit too plain for me. Um, you know, I would want a dressier version. So if I ever get my hands on one, hopefully it's a uh, configuration that I'm more interested in. But it was really nice to be able to get a knife that had an action that really, really kind of taught me something new, honestly. Um, after Blade Show, I've kind of been at the point where, you know, I felt a little bit of everything, and it... I, there haven't been any makers that have really taken my breath away in terms of action um, since I really got involved with Thorburn, maybe this Shirogorov a little bit, but uh, this particular Shamari, man, 
it is absolutely fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely uh, think about picking up a Gareth Bull if you have an opportunity in the future. The prices are still within reason, and I don't expect that to last too long considering the demand for his knives and just how incredibly, incredibly perfect they are. Really, I don't use that word lightly. Anybody that's followed the channel knows that I'm extraordinarily critical of knives, um, and this thing is borderline perfect. I can find very little wrong with this knife or very little that I would change. So thanks so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to see beautiful pictures of this knife or any of these other knives that are around the table, you can do so by following me on Instagram at Tovarish Works. And of course, if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason whatsoever, you can do so by hitting me up at TovarishWorks at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.